So shooters and reloaders out there, Fortune Cookie 45LC coming to you from the hot lead zone. And a lot of you out there have said this is a great idea. Sorting out and organizing our die sets by making this board with all the 7 8 inch holes drilled in it. And it really has been wonderful to have the organization of the die sets. But Peter Alex Ben brings up a very good point. And he says, depending on your climate, that this idea might cause rusting of the dyes. Because number one, they might be exposed. Number two, moisture in the wood could cause rusting. Well, I'd hate to see any of that happen to any of you out there. So that I hate to see it happen to myself. So I'm going to do something about that. Even though I'm in a dry climate and it's been a week and... There's no trace of any rust on this, on any of these dies, but I don't want to take a chance because I value my die sets that much. So I've got a great idea. What Peter Alex Ben says is it doesn't make sense to have to keep coating oil on these every time you think you've got to do it because that's a lot of work to do all these dies, coating them with oil. So here's what I've got figured First out. First of all, hardwood is the best for that project. Because it's a very dense, hard wood. Don't want to use soft, porous wood. This is a can of Charter pre-tested lubricants out of Pacific Oil Sales Company of Oakland, California many, many years ago. And what this is, is axle grease. Bearing grease. And you can get this kind of thing at any kind of auto supply store. What it is, is civilian cosmoline. And we know what good cosmoline will do protecting our firearms from rust. So, just taking a nice rag like this and having actual grease. We take our dye and we go ahead and touch it to the grease right here where it bears on the wood. Then we use the rest of this to coat all of this with that grease. So this is heavy enough that it's, just, it's on there permanently. So to show you how it works, go ahead and place the important part of the die against some grease and pick up some grease. You see how we got it in there? Then we use the rag to go ahead and coat that die evenly. Then back into the rack it goes. Show you another one. You see you can actually see a color change from the die out here to what we have here. Now to protect the top of the dies I'm going to go ahead and use a cover of silicone cloth. Now you'll notice that when we go ahead and use any of these dies in our reloading press that the presence of the grease will not affect the way the die goes into the press nor will it affect the way it processes our ammunition. Now I've forgotten who it was that suggested the silicone cloth but in the meantime, I'm just going to cover it with these oily rags. Good to have peace of mind along with our good organization. Yeah, that's just like Cosmoline, all right. This stuff is really yucky and it's going to stay in place. Going to need some paint thinner to get this stuff off. Now, the other suggestion is from James Heasley. And James Heasley says that acetone is such a horrible substance against plastic that we should be very careful storing our Ed's Red in plastic containers. Well, my reasoning was a gasoline container. Uh, gasoline's pretty bad in itself, so if it'll take gasoline, it should take the Ed's Red. And so far, three months of storage in this gasoline container has shown no deterioration of the container or of the plastic seals or rubber seals in there. So apparently it's impervious to the acetone. But to be safe, James Heasley has a good idea. And that is 
store the Ed's Red in metal containers and the ones that were used to purchase acetone, perhaps the best one. So I'm going to be putting the Ed's Red into metal containers uh, as I can get those containers available. In the meantime, I've been using that spout to fill my little bottle of Ed's Red and it's been working fine. So we're okay for Thanks now. to James Heasley. Better to be safe than sorry.